Hi guys, my name is Tamara and I'm an FX artist and this, um, and this time we will take a look at how the blood is forming and how we can do an easy setup for a blood formation. This is how it looks like. I had uh, one project where I had to make droplets coming out from um, cut out uh, of a head and I needed to make some uh, blood falling down. As you can see I have one main source which is somewhere in the middle, that one is more constant and there are some droplets on the, the sides that are appearing and uh, as you can see the blood formation at the beginning is way thicker it's uh, like a liquid sticking to, to the surface and as it, as it falls down it thickens out so it thins out and uh, as you can see I'm playing here with the uh, uh, P-scale and uh, you can define the formation and uh, the thickness of the, the blood itself. Uh, we will take a look at the setup. It's pretty... I narrow it down so it can be uh, easy to follow and I used as um, less notes as possible so we can have it as simple uh, as a simple setup. So in order to get those two streams, one in the middle that was um, uh, more constant, I defined two, uh, two separate uh, sources. Um, so I have a surface, simple surface, I have second surface out of it, which is scaled down in the middle. You can pick the number if this is what you go for. And I have two uh, pop networks, which are creating those dots from where the, the blood is uh, simulated, as you can see. And I'm merging those two sources, one which is going from the whole surface and uh, the other source is actually um, uh, making points onto the, the scale down surface and I'm uh, merging those two. We will take a look at the pop networks. So actually I take the surface, I create a pop, uh, pop network from uh, that surface. I am taking the first input uh, from, from that input to be sourced on that um, surface and in the bird tab you can select how many points you want I'm playing here with two uh, but actually you can go with a larger number and as you can see those are having life expectancy of 0 0.5 because I wanted it, those to create smaller droplets and to appear um, in smaller amount of time so they would look something like this and the other source actually is streaming also from the first input and in the bird tab I'm having instead of two I'm having one uh, particle which is which will give me kind of more um, and which will give me around one particle and uh, these particles have longer life expectancy so they live a bit longer and they will form those longer streams falling down uh, you can merge those two and this is actually our source. Um, I'm taking, as you can see, I'm um, as a geometry. I'm using the disks just so that you can see the uh, the p scale of the points. Instead of points, I'm using just disks because, like this, we can um, always have the idea what's the p-scale of each and every point because it's important and at this stage we'll play around with that. Uh, <coughs> we will use the age of the points just to play around with the p-scale because I want them at the beginning to for them to be smaller and as they live longer uh, they will grow so actually you can see they're growing and they're going back to smaller surfaces again and then they disappear. Uh, in order to do this, you can uh, you can use the attribute remap. Uh, you can take the original name is actually the attribute that you will use, along which you will define your new attribute. So I'm taking the age, and along that age, I will define the p scale. So this is the age from zero to one, and I'm defining it how the p scale will behave. So you can also see that if I play around with those uh, values I will get different kind of p-scale so I'll go at the end of the life of this uh, particle and maybe even 
put this to happen sooner to die all and to die this particle out. So you can play around. <laughs> and I'm having this attribute randomization just to have as a multiplication. Uh, that's my operation, just to have a, a bit of diversity in the p-scale and I'm also lowering it down, so the whole p-scale, because they were too large I lowered the maximum values to go to maximum to uh, 0 0.3 so I'm multiplying the whole p-scale uh, to the largest value of 0 0.3 which will give me way smaller particles and as you can see some are larger some are smaller and this is good enough for us to work uh, onto those points I'm attaching a spheres and just because I wanted it to play around only with the radius onto X and uh, Z axis and I wanted uh, just a small amount of uh, epsilon axis to be there so that's the only reason why you can also if you have some large um, scale of sur um, sources, you can also put here a mountain or a noise to the uh, position so you can have a bit uh, more variation into the shapes, not to be this kind of spherical and flat. It depends what you, you really want. And I copied uh, those spheres onto the uh, points and they take the, the P scale right away so uh, they will uh, take the size of the P scale and you will see that they're enlarging from the beginning they start out small and then they form bigger this is really important with the blood because they it's uh, the, because of the, the surface tension that the uh, blood has it will not form with its full size at once it needs some time to grow so after this i take those um uh, those spheres and i am uh, making a dot network and this is how the dot network looks and i am forming the the flip fluid here from those uh, spheres I'm using a pop source so that I can define how many points and what the resolution I need. You can play around with this number. <coughs> I went a little bit higher just to have a bit more resolution, but for your end results, maybe you will need to go in higher. It depends what you're working with. And as a source, I use the first input. I use the pop attract just so that I can have this small formation here and it can stick a little bit to the surface uh, the goal is the surface points <coughs> and um, as an input is actually the first uh, the first um, input into this uh, dot network which were actually the spheres and like this we will have sticking to those surfaces a little bit more you can play around with this uh, for scale, it depends on your scale in the scene and it depends uh, what you're looking for. And I also use the pop track just so that I can have a little bit of air resistance. It helps out um, with the formation and uh, making this fluid stick together, not to be so uh, broken down. And uh, into the flip fluid, uh, actually I'm uh, playing around with uh, a particle separation that's actually the resolution that you're gonna end up having for this fluid into the initial data just you need to enable the viscosity because we all know that uh, the blood has a uh, uh, viscosity values and uh, in the guides you can choose whatever you prefer I prefer the particles just to see their age and their uh, with the color and just to see how they're forming. Uh, in the physical, um, you can put the viscosity value now to um, whatever suits best for you. Uh, for me, the 10 was enough. And I also used into the flip solver. Uh, if you go to the volume motion, there is a top for viscosity. You can enable it here 
so that it can take into the consideration the viscosity attribute. Uh, the volume limits you can define. It depends on your uh, scene size, but you can click enter and it will give you those arrows at the side so you can define the container. Uh, this will speed up your simulation as well. Whatever is outside of the box will not be calculated, so you can make the, the box even shorter. Um, and also at the sub steps, uh, because I scaled down the, uh, the time, um, I multiplied it by 2.5. So this value actually will take each and every force. It will uh, multiply it by 2.5 and it will speed up everything. When you're speeding up uh, like this with the time scale, you need to make sure that you have enough sub steps to fill those in between frames and just to have enough calculation in between and uh, not to end up with the broken down uh, fluids. After this, this is actually the what I consider the, the best and maybe the most useful part. Mm -hmm. I am uh, using the attribute blur uh, just because you can take the position and blur blur that as an attribute. You can blur it down and put as many iterations as you want. Uh, you need to, to put the influence type to proximity and you can see if your uh, blurring, if your blurring iterations are uh, larger in number, it will kind of form that surface tension that usually the water or the fluids ha has it, have it. And this will bring the particles more together. Uh, it's more visible when you have, for example, a bullet going through a body and when the, the blood is spreaded around and uh, when you have blood splatter. Uh, this blurring iteration will bring that blood uh, more um, together. <coughs> After this, I am converting, sorry, I am um, defining the P scale and I'm defining it along the Y axis because um, this stream is only going downwards, so it was easier for me to kind of define it, what's the, the highest point, and to thin it out as it goes down. Um, I'm taking the, I'm creating um, normalized age and I'm fitting those particles throughout the Y axis. I'm taking their position, I'm fitting them from uh, what I consider that is the minimal, uh, minimum height, which I will define later on down here at the bottom. It uh, depends how far down it, your fluid goes. Mine goes somewhere around till a minus 10 or something like that. So I put a bigger value and from that point down I go to zero because uh, my formation is actually at um, the bottom of the, the scene. And I put uh, the bigger value to be at the bottom and uh, to go to zero at the top. And I'm taking the P scale I am making a ramp throughout it's called which is called scale and I'm making a ramp throughout this agent uh, normalized age and if you are not sure what's happening you can also put um, a CD attribute just to see how that formation is affecting the P scale and as you can see here, here are the values and my formation actually is you can play around with um, the thickness of the fluid like this you can go higher you can have even one more dot here maybe just thin it out and just make it like that you can play around uh, with those values and make it convenient for your uh, scene <laughs> and as it goes down, it goes down to, to zero value. After this, I'm converting it everything into VDB, just because I wanted it to smooth those surfaces out, just to play it a little bit more. Uh, I'm taking the voxel size of the flip fluid, so I'm basically copying 
this particle separation just copy and go here and paste it as relative reference it will create this connection uh, this one will also define your at the end when you're converting it to a polygon it will define your wireframe the thickness of your wireframe and the resolution make sure you don't go overboard because it will create pretty dense um, wireframe <coughs> and we want to keep the we want to keep things simple <coughs> sorry and after this I'm using the uh, reshaping uh, just close the surfaces from the VDBs dilate it a little bit just so it can go outwards as you can see uh, because the smoothing actually will scale it down will push it a little bit inwards so make sure you dilate it and you have enough um, room for you to smooth out the surface I dilated it just a little bit and I smooth out the surfaces as you can see because the, the blood formation usually has a really smooth surface and I convert this into a polygon just I'm putting a color and that's it this is the the blood formation itself and this is how I formed my blood streams thanks all, all for watching I hope it was useful see you again